Learning how and to what extent bonefish and tarpon populations are connected is important for conservation, because this information allows us to design the most effective management plans. There are two ways that fish populations in different locations can be connected, by migrations of adults and by the transport of fish larvae by ocean currents. On the local scale, say, an island in the Bahamas or the Florida Keys, bonefish in different locations are connected by spawning migrations. Tagging and tracking of bonefish in the Bahamas, Belize, and Florida Keys shows that for most of the year adult bonefish stick to a small area. In other words, if you fish a flat often, you are likely fishing the same local population. But during spawning season, bonefish undertake long-distance migrations to spawning sites. Some even travel to sites that are up to 70 miles away from their home flats before returning. This means that during the spawning season, bonefish from a wide area can mix. Before they spawn, bonefish gather into a large school. Then, at night, they swim together to the offshore spawning site. While ocean depths can reach thousands of feet, bonefish only spawn in the top 200 feet or so of water. They use a method called broadcast spawning. They eject eggs and sperm into the open water, where fertilization occurs. The fertilized eggs hatch in about 24 hours, and the tiny larvae live as plankton in the open ocean for between 41 and 71 days. Ocean currents can hold the larvae near their parents' location, or the currents can transport the larvae very long distances. So a larva that has spawned off the island of South Andros in the Bahamas might end up becoming a juvenile bonefish in Andros, or on the north coast of Cuba. Our research shows that a larva spawned off the coast of southwest Cuba, Mexico, or Belize might be carried by ocean currents all the way to the Florida Keys, where it then transforms into a juvenile bonefish. The end result is that bonefish in separate locations are essentially part of the same genetic population. In other words, the Caribbean is one big genetic melting pot. Like bonefish, tarpon spawn in offshore groups and their larvae can drift in the ocean's currents far from where they were spawned. Some larvae spawned in the Gulf of Mexico wind up in southwest Florida, where they transform into juvenile tarpon in the safety of estuaries and mangrove creeks. Tarpon populations are also connected through migration. Subdult and adult tarpon are capable of making long-distance migrations, both for spawning and to feed. For example, some tarpon that spend their spring in the Keys migrate in the summer as far as the mid-Atlantic, where there is an abundance of menhaden and other bait fish. However, management regulations on tarpon fishing outside of Florida generally fail to provide adequate protections for the Silver King leaving them at risk during their seasonal migrations. So what does the discovery of bonefish and tarpon connectivity mean for conservation? It means that the flats fishery is a shared resource and we must all do our part to conserve it, regardless of where we fish. On the local scale, we must focus on conserving and protecting the home flats of adult bonefish. We must also protect spawning migration pathways, spawning sites, and the habitats of juvenile bonefish. On the regional scale, we need to make sure that bonefish habitats and populations are healthy in all locations, since the populations are interconnected. In other words, every location where bonefish spawn, develop, travel, and live is important to having a healthy regional population, and your local fishery depends on a healthy regional population, as well as local conservation measures. The same holds true for tarpon. It is important to make sure that your favorite local fishing area has good conservation measures in place, but only focusing on the fishing in your home waters isn't nearly enough. What happens in one location has a domino effect on the tarpon fisheries in countless other locations throughout the region. We thank you for your support of our efforts to conserve bonefish and tarpon in Florida and across the Caribbean and we encourage you to be engaged in flats conservation wherever it's necessary. The future of our shared flats fishery depends on it. To become a member of Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, please visit btt.org join.